Success is getting what you want, and happiness is wanting what you get. It is important to be honest about your strengths and weaknesses and encourage others to do the same. The key to success is to possess the passion and drive. The secret to being a successful woman in today's market is to walk to the beat of your own drum, listen to your intuition and always follow through. Gisani Arshakuni has never doubted that she is valuable and deserves every chance and opportunity to pursue and achieve her own dreams. When did you start your career in cosmetics? Oh my god, I was back long, long time ago. I was in 2004 when I was fresh off the boat immigrant, looking for a job. But in the back of my mind, you know, I always kind of thinking about working in cosmetics, even though I am an engineer. I have master's degree in industrial engineering, as crazy as it sounds, but you know, I'm working in cosmetics. So I started in 2004 in Robinson's May, behind the counter, working for Elizabeth Arden. And I was a girl that had no idea about cosmetics. I didn't, knew, I didn't know anything about makeup. No lipstick, no mascara, no foundation. And you know, but it kind of, it worked out. I think when you have passion and you have a desire to be the best in whatever you do, that's when things are happening. Like I say, in America, it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but America, it is a land of opportunity. Sure. And sure. you know, you can do whatever, you can make your, whatever you want out of yourself if you want to get to a certain point. That's, that's just my opinion. Uh, what brands did you work with? Um, okay, let me go back about 14 years. Uh, my very first brand was Elizabeth Arden. And then after that, I did work for Clarence, Cosmetics, it's another French brand, and that was at Nordstrom. And then I did work for Estee Lauder, and I did, and after that, I worked for Celebrity Fragrances. I believe it or not, I launched, as crazy as it sounds again, I launched Rihanna Fragrance. Some people will remember, it was an interesting fragrance called Rebel Floor. I did launch Justin Bieber, um, Nicki Minaj, and then after that, um, I worked with, um, that time it called Beauty Prestige International. That's how the company called um, back in the days. We managed beautiful and niche and unique fragrances. Narciso Rodriguez, Issey Miyake, I think, I'm sure for, it Salvador will ring a bell. Ferragamo. Salvatore Ferragamo actually we acquired in 2013. We did acquire Salvatore Ferragamo, Burberry, and um, of course, I'm trying to think, um, am I if I'm forgetting something? Well, of course, Hermes was a part of the portfolio when I, you know, took that job. And then recently, our company is also, you know, um, managing Dolce Gabbana uh, fragrance house. So as you can see, you know, a lot of, it was a lot to learn and fragrance became my passion. Because yes, we all have a job and sometimes, you know, people used to ask me, do you love your job? And I said, you know what, I make money. That's what I do. But after, um, you know, taking this career, this path, I can truly say that I love what I do because it makes difference in people's life. Speaking of fragrances, I know that you're passionate about fragrances. Why? Yes, Asha Lujan, absolutely right. I am passionate about fragrance because fragrance can bring difference in everybody's life. Finding a fragrance, it's like finding a good wine. Have you ever been at the wine tasting? Of course, several times. Several times. So, you know, imagine like you go, you taste different wines. It's the same thing when you try different perfumes. And since we happen to be here, I want to kind of show you an example. So I want you to smell this. Citrusy. Citrusy, right? I want you to smell this. Rhubarb? Rhubarb. Yeah, so it's the same I thing. Fragrance, fragrance uh, is related to our memories because you obviously remember the very first fragrance that your grandma was using. I'm sure it was probably Krasna and Moskva, right? That's what my grandma used to use. Or I remember my mother's first fragrance. And each fragrance, each scent, resonates to a memory, to a childhood memory, either good or bad, 
value to your first love, first kiss, first touch. And in our company, in the company that I'm working currently, that uh, art is mastered to the extreme, to the finest. Especially, you know, with Hermes, with Narciso, with Dolce, especially with Hermes. There is so many fragrances and it takes time to find the fragrance that will make you smile, that will make you happy, happy. that will be your morning fragrance, will be your evening fragrance. I'm kind of simplifying it, but it's an art, it's a true art. So um, if you want to find the right scent, it's not like, you know, I went, I picked out, I, I smelled. You sometimes, it you know, you research. Need, it takes research. So that's why working with a, call it client, call it customer, working with a friend, because I did suggest that a lot of fragrances to my friends, to even my parents, and to my dad. To and he, they got addicted to it, absolutely. So it's an art. It's the, one of the finest arts to choose the right fragrance. So that's why it's my passion, because fragrance can change your mood. You can come to me and you will be upset about something or maybe you're not feeling right and I can change it in a split second. And it makes people feel better, it makes people realize, you know, that they probably can carry themselves differently with a certain fragrances. It's an art of transformation. That's what I love about it. And besides, perfume is so personalized. Absolutely. You know, there's not one universal perfume for everyone. You know, we have like um, perfumes that everyone wears. And that's not really my style. My style is and my suggestion to everyone, you need to find yours. You need to find your, find your scent. Because when you go in a room, it's not like I sprayed, um, you know, I put on me, um, I don't know, like a litter of fragrance and then everyone can smell me. That's not how it is. You can have a drop, and then it will speak about your presence. And the chemistry of the body. Absolutely. You know, like if you, if we go, you know, down into ingredients, yeah, the chemistry, the and notes, the notes, and then of course, perfumer makes a difference. There's a lot of different perfumers in the world. Um, actually, I don't know if you have read the book Perfumer or you've watched the movie. I watched the movie. Yeah, yes. I, I read the book. The book is actually a lot more um, intense. Intense. So, um, you know, that's actually what it is. It's an art of transformation of raw materials into something beautiful, beautiful. into a piece of art that you actually want to own, you want to have, and you, and that's your personal. You know, you actually, you don't want to, you don't want to even share it with your girlfriend. Look, I can see the, the excitement in your eyes. So that, that says so much about you. Gisane, what is the secret to your success? There's a lot of components to my success. Let me put it that way. Thank you very much for um, you know asking the question. First, I'm a perfectionist. Everything that I do, I have to master it to perfection. Doesn't matter, is it in a personal life or is it in work? And that's why even though I never had any experience in cosmetics when I started you know, working there, I decided to get to the highest level possible. I'm still not at the highest level, level possible, but, um, you know, I'm working towards it. And then another thing that makes you successful is being surrounded with right people, with good people, being genuine, being fair, because in this business, in this industry, you need to have a team of people who have your back. And I probably want to say that I was able, you know, um, to find people who will follow me anywhere I go. And that's one of the that's one of the components. But the main thing you need to love what you do. Another very important element, you have to remain human. Regardless of your position, regardless where life will take you, you have to remain human and you need to stay the same person. Because position or success doesn't give you right to look at anyone from above. I think as people we are all equal and the most successful person, the most successful leader is the one who knows the way, shows the way and does the way herself. So you have to be the master of human relationship, you have to be multitasker and, and stay humble. And stay humble. That's the main thing. You stay humble, sky will be the limit. Hi, my name is Nathan Rubin and I worked with Gasani for a few years at Shiseido Cosmetics. Uh, getting to know Gasani was really a pleasure and I have to tell you there's so much that I admire about her. Probably one of the biggest things is her work ethic. 
uh, Ghassani I know, you know, moved to the United States from Armenia and she explained to me one time that in Armenia she had um, a fairly high level of education, was pretty accomplished there and when she came to the United States she really had to start over and you know I I don't know what that's like um, and I admire it greatly I always would get so much energy from her working with her um, you know she she's always would say that she learned a lot from me but I, I learned just as much from her you know when you work with somebody who has that kind of passion and and that just generous spirit it really it really feeds you and nourishes you and uh, you know Ghassani has always been incredibly generous we worked really really hard but just on a personal level she always um, was very kind very considerate um, very giving um, I remember she came back from one of her trips to Armenia with all kinds of gifts for me and she always likes to feed me that's one of the things we, we share in common we love to eat and she introduced me to this really good Armenian ba bakery and uh, and Glendale and a lot of her um, Armenian family and friends and it really um, inspired me to learn a little bit more about Armenian culture and I, I really uh, got connected to to her and to them when I worked with her. Um, Kasani is one of those rare people who who just really um, connects with you as a person and uh, her tirelessness, her work ethic, her generosity is something that um, that I always cherish and value and uh, you know even now that I don't work with her um, she's one of the the few people actually that I've stayed in contact with from the company because you know uh, we we had we formed a connection that was more than just work and um, you know it's always nice when that happens so um, I can't speak highly enough about Kasani I I know that she will she will go far because um, she she's tireless and you know she works very hard but along that she has the human side and those are those are two things that you don't often see in combination lots of times people will have one or the other but kasani has got both and you know what that's special so um, I, it's been a pleasure knowing Kasani and I hope to know her for uh, for as long as I as I possibly can Yurakan Churis de Vavorman Vera, Mesas de Sucun, Unimer Jaran Gutsuna, Merentanica, Merhamanka. Menk Imastavorum and Kanka, Mer and Kalum Nerov, Ugorterov. Gortes, Vorkapren Daredar. Martka in Hishogutsuna, Iskakan Parkeve. Amen Mikank, Stertsume, Isepakan Urin. Glendale Funeral Home has Statutsuna, Patras de Sutaberel Hatu Kushadrutsun, Irbas Mazanta Rayutsun Nerish Norif. International Families Association is a non-profit organization. Kazmakerputsun, Burtarine Sharunak Tarayume in a past Tatar Yakamutun at Sorantani Kneri. Yurakan Chur Yerku Shapti of Chorek Shapti Orerin, Kesurit Seto Jama Yerku Sitz Hinga, Drama Dervume, and Vajar Utelik Yevaila Prankner. And Tunvume Amente Sakihovana Burutsun. Mandra Masneri Hamar Zangaharel Utmeput Yot Yot Zero Zero Yot Yotanasun Inna Herakosa Hamarov. For advertising on Inside TV, please call 818-653-0199. Hi everyone, I'm Archie Marsanian. I am Gisani Ashikuni's son. And well, beyond being her son, I well, she's also a very, very close friend of mine. If you want to know a little about her, she is extremely caring lovable, she motivates you to accomplish anything and everything you want. Doesn't matter if, you know, if you're anyone close to her or a worker or a customer. If she finds something that you're passionate about and she becomes even the tiniest of friends with you or even at the moment she'll find a way to help you, guaranteed. Now, if you want to know her work style, this woman has more energy than anyone I have ever known. You can put five nuclear reactors in her and she still tops them all off. I'll tell you that much. She can work 24 hours, sleep for 30 minutes, and get back up and do another 24 hours. She is just absolutely incredible. She's very goal-oriented, 
now life oriented. She's trying to live a little bit more. She's trying to absorb the world as she should and as anybody should. Yes, handi petsi gisanein. Vore yurahatu ker ir anunov yev azganunov gisane arshakuni. Vore ches gatni amen teh miteh karine marine narine. Pats gisanen ir anunov yev ira eucham inka yurahatu ke insamar. Te enker te gorts enker. թե որպես մարդ խորհրդատու ամեն ինչի մեջ կարասիրահետ զրուցակից լինես հաճելի էներգիա ստանաս որ այսօր բոլորի համար դա շատ կարևոր է What is your idea of perfect happiness Perfect idea of the happiness what it can be I think every person goes through different stages in their life and each stage is related to a different understanding of the happiness it was a movie a couple of years ago um, pursue of happiness which could actually relate to a lot of us and i think when you're a little kid your happiness is having your mom mommy your daddy maybe playing outside maybe having your toys when you are 16 your idea of happiness is maybe finding that perfect person that will take you out on a perfect date. When you are in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, and each stage you go through a different understanding because you are discovering yourself as a person. For me, uh, understanding of a perfect happiness or when I feel the perfect happiness is finding a balance. A balance within myself, within my surroundings, with my family, with my friends, with my workplace. And I think also the happiness is when you don't expect things from others. You give yourself. You are being of service for your community, for the world, for your country, and you are projecting that positive energy, you are projecting your feelings and your emotions and your desires to everyone else. I think that you can, with that you can create probably that perfect understanding of the perfect happiness. But as we all know, there's no perfection. Which living person do you admire most? Very interesting question. Because we all grow up having and or idolizing certain, you know, movie stars or singers or, you know, people. Um, I know when I was a teenager, I didn't really have an idol. But I actually liked certain individuals that were very famous during my teenage years. And what really brought up a memory right now when you ask the question, it's a little episode when I was about, I think I was 14 years old, I was in eighth grade. And in our Armenian literature class, we had a home assignment to write an essay about a female and a male person who was our inspiration. So for the female person, I chose Margaret Thatcher because it was 1986, it was an era of Gorbachev, Reagan, and their names were constantly involved on TV, in the newspapers. But what fascinated Margaret Thatcher for me was not only the fact that she was an iron lady, she was one of a kind, she was actually one of the only woman politician, if I'm not mistaken, back in, back in that time, and she actually was a, one of the world rulers. But she was also a perfect wife for her husband because i remember reading an uh, reading an article about you know about like her lifestyle and um they were saying that she would wake up every morning at 7 a.m to cook breakfast for her husband to cook an oatmeal because that was the only thing he liked so that that for me, was um, a fascinating example of a combination of being able to combine your career, your political career, and plus uh, an ability to stay a wife and actually, you know, not ruin your personal life. Gisane, what do you consider your greatest achievement? Hmm. Now you're making me think. I have a couple of achievements that I can talk about. Um, because I think for all of us immigrants who are were basically guests in this country and for us being able to live in a different country and to achieve certain goals in our lives that I think you know a greatest can be a greatest accomplishment for everyone but you know I'm gonna put my you know um, career 
my work, you know, everything really to work aside. And I think for me personally, my greatest achievement is my son. We all have kids, we're proud of our kids. But raising a kid in the um, in United States, in, in a different country with a different cultural beliefs, with, a different, uh, with different cultural rules and regulations, it's very hard because we come from a different background. And here you're being thrown into the environment that is um, not really strange to you, but it, it is, it's a different world. It has its different you know, game rules. So you have to be able to adapt and adjust and to be able to work and you know, accomplish things for yourself, to be able to feed a family and also raise a child, which is not easy because there is, um, uh, there's a lot of hardships, um, I can say, you know, when you're raising a child, especially when you don't have an army of grandfathers and grandmothers and babysitters and, you know, relatives who will be lining up taking two kid to, you know, to our, uh, extracurricular activities, you know, or taking him to school and bringing him back, then, you know, things, things can happen. But I can proudly say for myself that I was able to raise an amazing child that not only, you know, he's an amazing uh, individual with that, and I think he has one of the biggest hearts ever. He is smart, he's intelligent, he is better than me. I was always afraid that maybe I'm not doing a good job as a mother, but I think I was able to create, to mold him into what I, not what I wanted him to be, but what I want him to see to become. And I know for him, sky is the limit. I know that friendship is very important for you. What do you most value in your friends? Great question. And actually, I'm going to um, actually remind you one of the Russian sayings. Uh, it says, don't have 100 rubles, but have 100 friends. It was my, through my entire life, that saying was one of the most actual ones because especially being in a different country where you don't have a lot of relatives and all your relatives and friends are back in Armenia, back home, uh, it's very hard to find a true friendship. Because I will say there are people that come and go in your life. There are people who came to your life to introduce you to somebody else. And then you have a huge list of people that I can call them acquaintance. But then through those acquaintances, you pick different individuals that are going to stay with you throughout your entire life. For me, what I value the most in my friends, it's loyalty, it's honesty, and um, you know, being open-hearted because I open my heart for everyone. And I actually, um, I don't know if it's um, right to say bro broke up. It just, I eliminated a couple of people from my life because I um, found them being my friend just because they wanted to, um, they had an expectation from me. I don't think friend needs to have an expectation. Friendship is something that comes from within. It's from your heart. And that's what I value the most. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would that be? Hmm. <laughs> well, my son says that probably I need to be more organized. What I think for me, I think I find balance in my chaos. I think what I would change about myself, I probably would want to be less emotional because my emotions are on my face. That's why I can never play poker. Sometimes I can't hide it. If I hate you, you will see me. If I love you, you will see that. If I am excited about something, you will see that. And sometimes, um, you know, especially in the work environment, it's not really beneficiary. You need to be able to hide your emotion and not react with certain passion to certain things. And, um, I mean, like, I don't know what else, um, what else I would change. Probably I am, I'm perfectionist, maybe too much of a perfectionist. Maybe I would tweak that a little bit. Not, not necessarily, you know, will change it. Mm. And, and I'm sure if you ask people who are around me, they probably will find a, a list of things that, you know, I should change probably, you know, talk less on the phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think in 21st century, you know, that's, you, you can't avoid that. That's something that everyone, everyone does. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. What are the qualities that you most like in a woman and a man? Mm, now you're going to make me think. Uh, the quality that I most admire in women is being independent. Because me as a woman, I am independent and I'm strong. So I think that's one of the values that I think each woman has to possess. But also, with being independent and strong, don't be too much masculine. You know, still keep your femininity. Still keep, you know, that intriguing side of you that uh, every woman has. My dad um, said once, the woman's brain is a mosaic. I don't remember whose quote is that, but I think each woman has to keep that because we are different creatures. And um, I will say we're probably from Venus, like that you know, saying says, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And then in a man, uh, man um, has to be a provider. I think to me that's very, you know, that's very important and me, it ha he has to be a gentleman because I think nowadays that gentlemanism, I don't know if how, you know, how correct I'm, um, you know, it, that's actually the word that I make, made up myself, um, we don't find a lot of gentlemen nowadays. I think men has to respect women. Um, that's for me, it's one of the highest qualities, doesn't matter is it husband and wife, is it, you know, father, daughter, or it's a co-worker, friend, you know, men has to have respect towards women. And like I said, being a provider, I think every man has to be a provider, you know, for, for his family. <laughs>International Families Association is a non-profit organization. Kazmakerputsun vor tarine sharunak tsarayume ina past tsatsar yekamut unetsog entanikneri. Yurakan chur yerku shapti yev chorek shapti orerin kesorit seto jama yerku sits hinga drama dervume anvechar utelik yevaila prankner. Antunvume amen tesaki hovana borutsun. Մանրա մասների համար զանգահարել 8170-0779 հերախոսահամարով։